Praise the Lord to everyone. I am Pastor Bryant Phillips, and we are Truth Ministries of Charlotte, North Carolina. Come on, let's give God some praise, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And we thank God for this day that he has made for this opportunity to speak the word of God in these last and evil days to all of our family and friends and loved ones who may be watching us on our social media platforms. To everyone that is here on today, truly God is good. And we want to lift up the name of Jesus. No matter what your situation is, let's always give God the glory. Because the victory is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so as we go any further into this message, I'm going to go before the Lord with a word of prayer as I acknowledge God. Uh, Father, in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus, I give you the glory today. Lord, I ask you to have your way, God. Uh, as I decrease and you increase, Lord, I ask that your words resonate with your people, that someone would be touched and encouraged right now by your words, Father God, that I, your servant, would be used as a vessel to carry out your will. And that you and you only would receive all the glory. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I, I, I'm very excited today for our visitors that were here with us on today. And for what is God is doing as we're preparing for a new year. As we're preparing for a new season. Um, truly, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Because God is good and one thing that has to be understood is that when you start to establish a relationship with God uh, when you start to glorify God when you start striving to live your life according to the gospel um, there's always going to be some bumps in the road there's always going to be some bumps in the road. And so today I want to talk about some things because what I want to do is I want to encourage God's people. I want to encourage God's people in a season where I see that as the believers and those who God has called or who he's chosen to come unto him, I want you to know that there's going to be some obstacles as you're going and as God is calling and as you're coming, I want you to know there's going to be some obstacles. And there's something I'm going to touch on today that's very important because it's very powerful and it's very real in each and every one of our lives. And so right now what this is is preparation for God's people. In this season, we need to be prepared. We need to see the wiles of the devil. We need to be ready. Amen? Amen. We want to be ready. And so I want to start off with... Proverbs chapter 18 and 21, which says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And um, if you have your Bibles today, go with me. Let's go to the book of Psalms. And I want to go to the 109th chapter. And I want to read the first five verses of the scripture. Uh, for those watching at home, that's Psalms chapter 109 starting at the first verse amen and what i'm going to do is i'm going to encourage god's people today because i want you to hear a word from god for the bible says psalms 109 it says hold not thy peace O god of my praise for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me they have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. How many know that David was praying unto God? He was laying a petition before the feet of the Lord because he had been transgressed against. He had been spoken against that even in love, he was hated. He was talked about. He was mistreated. But I'm here today because I want you to know that when these things start to transpire, we got to learn how to first and foremost go before the Lord and pray and seek God for strength and understanding to be able to withstand these things that are up against us. 
See, the first thing David did was he prayed. He laid that petition. He went before the Lord. And if I could choose a topic for discussion today, this is what I would give you. Remember this. It does not matter the picture that people paint when Jesus is holding the brush. Hallelujah. How many with me on today? It don't matter what kind of picture people paint about you when Jesus Christ is holding the paintbrush. Hallelujah. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care how they talk about you because I want you to know today that it does not matter who you are. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter what you've been through. It don't matter how much love you showed. It don't, people will always have something negative to say. People will always talk about you. There's going to be backbiters. There's going to be people that you trusted, family members that you loved, people that you took in, people that you helped people that you gave your very last to and they will turn right around and they will talk about you like you nothing but I'm here today to tell you that as long as Jesus is the forefront of your salvation they don't have no victory over you you gotta walk in that because I want you to know that yes words do hurt now, of course, we've been trained up to believe, oh, don't worry about what people say, which, and I'm here to declare that that's the truth. Don't worry about what they say. But that does not change the fact that it does hurt. It hurts when somebody you love, that you trusted, that you care for, may have spoken against you or tells evil against you or gets in groups and, and talks about you. Those things do hurt. They hurt. But I'm here today to declare that the victory is in Christ Jesus. It is in Jesus. It don't matter what they say. I'm here to tell you today that I got people, they talking about me right now. They don't even know why. Because the devil will always find a way to try to distract you from what he's getting ready to do, which is conjure up a bunch of confusion because he is the author of it. He wants to keep us down. And he will use every tool that he has to keep you down. Hallelujah. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to jump over to 109 and I'm going to go to the 28th verse. And I want you to hear a few more verses of the scripture. For the Bible says in verse 28 of 109 of Psalms, it says, let them curse, but bless thou. Hallelujah. How many know that? You got to learn that when they talk about you, you got to learn how to pray for them. That's how you don't allow the enemy to steal your joy. When they talking against you, you got to learn how to pray for them because they know not what they do. They, most people don't understand their ignorance because they're walking in their own way. But when you start to have a relationship with God, you got to learn how to fight against the enemy because the devil's going to come and he's going to try to take your joy your peace, your mind, your salvation. He wants it all. That's why the scripture says, let them curse. Let them talk. Let them gossip. Let them backbite. Let them hate. How many know that most people, they hating on you because they ain't you? How many know they hating on you because they don't have your anointing? How many know that they hating on you because they see that glow that you have inside of you and inside of them is nothing but darkness and dead and they hate you for it. They hate you because they try to stir you up to come and be ignorant towards them when they ignorant towards you and all you give them is a smile, all you give them is a handshake, all you show them is love and no matter how much they try to bring you down, you still can't be moved and they're going to hate you for it. They're going to hate you for it. Hallelujah. It says, when they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. How many know you got to rejoice when that hatred comes? You got to learn how to rejoice when they're talking against you. You give God the glory because you know you serve a God with a, that is greater. And that's why they mad. They mad because they see God in you. 
That's why the Bible says, let your light so shine before all men that they see your good works and then they glorify your God that's in heaven. How many know that when it was time for you to get that promotion, somebody talked against you. Somebody said they don't deserve it. Somebody said, I'm the one that's more qualified for that position and you didn't get it. But how many know that God is in control of all things? You didn't get that promotion because God's got something greater for you in another season and all you got to do is wait on God and you will see how he will give you an increase that's greater than any promotion. We got to understand that God has predestined all things and it's nothing that no one can do to change that. So sometimes when they're talking and backbiting and you wonder, I can't believe that this person caused me not to have this. Guess what? It wasn't for you because what God got for you, nobody can't have that but you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you glorify his name. Okay, I didn't get that promotion, but God, I know you got something coming, and I can't wait to receive what you have for me. Amen. That's why it don't matter the picture that they paint about you when Jesus is holding the brush. When Jesus is painting that picture, it don't matter what they say. I want you to know that they're going to talk just to be talking. They're going to hate just to be hating. They'll smile in your face like they love you. And the minute you turn your back, they'll kick you right down. Hallelujah. See, I want to prepare God's people. Ephesians 4 and 29 says this. Let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the people. So I'm here to tell you today that it does not matter what people say about you. Don't let nothing corrupt come out of your mouth. Don't let nobody steal who you are. Don't let nobody take your peace. Don't let nobody have your joy. Don't let nobody steal your salvation. Don't don't let nobody take what God has given you. Don't let nobody hinder you from becoming what God is raising you up to be. And so when they talking against you, you know, as men and women, we got a natural reaction to come back. We will clap back at you. How many know that in this season, we don't clap back. We give God the glory. We don't fight back. We let God fight our enemy. He is the one who fights our enemies. He fights our battles. He's the one. How many know you can't go through nothing unless God say you got to go through it? Don't let nobody take it. Your peace, your mind, your joy, your hope. Don't let nobody have it. Because they're going to talk. They're going to talk. They talked about me like a dog. Dope biller. Prison. Some people today ask me, uh, you up there preaching the gospel, you didn't use to lie, steal, cheat, run the streets with me. Why? Because if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Hallelujah. And guess what? They'll try to take that from you. They'll call you an imposter. They'll say that you're a liar. So I had a friend of mine. He knew I was such a hustler. Me and him ran the streets for so many years. He thought I was in the church trying to game the church for money. He thought I was on another hustle. He was like, bro, you got a hustle that ain't nobody never had. I'm here to tell you, bro, Jesus ain't no hustle. He ain't no hustle. I've been restored, redeemed, renewed, restored in the blood of Jesus. I've been raised up. I'm a new creature. I'm talking these words and repping my Christ for free. I don't get nothing. And everything that I have is because of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> you missing it. You still slinging nickel bags. I'm slinging scripture. Hallelujah. And I'm coming up and you still going to jail. And we 45. Who's, who, who messing up? Who, somebody missed it. It ain't me. I'm good. You still live with your mama. I own a house. Somebody messed up. Hallelujah. They want to stop you. They're going to talk about you. They want to discourage you. How many know I'm here to talk to the young folks today. When you go to school and you start to have a different swag, we all, everybody talk about swag, right? But how about when you go to school and you got that swag, but that swag that you got now is a little different from the other kids. Because you don't move like them. And when they run to skip class to go do something they ain't got no business, you decide you don't want to do that. You, say, you tell them, nah, I'm, stay, I'm going to class. 
Oh, we going over here to chill after school. No, I'm going home. Because now that swag you got is, is a different type of swag. Now Jesus is moving in. Now he's coming into your life. Now he's working that power that he has. He's changing you gradually. And guess what? Your friends that you thought was your friends, they're going to talk about you like a dog. Like a dog. Like something wrong with you for wanting to do right. How many, how many know? How, you ever been there? If I got, do I got some teenagers in here, some young folks in school? You ever had your friends look at you like you crazy because you don't want to smoke? Because you don't want to cut? Because you don't want to curse? Because you don't want to run away? Because you don't want to go chase some knucklehead little boy or little girl? And they look at you like something wrong with you, like your mind gone? Because you want to do the right thing? Because you're tired of your mother crying? You're tired of hurting your mother and your father? And all of a sudden now, you, something wrong with you? They don't like you now? Now they get in their groups and talk about you? But guess what? Jesus loves you. And you don't need him. The one thing about God, what he will do is he will take everything from you that you don't need. Even when it hurts. That means you didn't need it. I had plenty of friends before I got right with God. Now they all gone because I didn't need them. What a friend we have in Jesus. Woo! That's one of my favorite songs. What a friend we have in Jesus. I don't need friends. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be deceived. The devil's a liar. You don't need people. Man will lead you astray. Follow Christ. Hallelujah. Let me give you the word. Matthews 5 and 11. Listen to the scripture. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. When they persecute you for Christ's sake, that means you blessed. Hallelujah. That means you blessed. That means you're favored. Because one thing I got to be transparent with is when you turn your heart to God, they will persecute you as they persecuted Christ. And the minute you let Jesus come off your tongue, they really going to come for you. So you better be ready. Yes, they hate you. They will hate you for Christ's sake. The same way they hated him. If you think they strung our Lord and Savior to a tree, they strung him to a tree. What you think they going to do to you? That's why you got to lean on your faith at all times that don't matter what's transpiring that you know God got you. Because when I tell you, a reviler, someone that will take your character and destroy it. You could have done everything in your power to help them. They'll still find somebody to say something bad about you. Now, let me give you a trick. You want to protect yourself from it? It's one thing for a person to backbite and gossip. Watch out for the person that delivers it. Come on now. You got to be careful. Make sure you're not that person. That's why you don't let your ears be a trash can for foolishness. When people come around and start talking about other people, you got to protect your mind. You got to protect your spirit from the revilers. Because if you get involved in that, you'll become one. Now they got you. The enemy got you now. That's why sometimes when we go, you ever been sitting at home and you see the phone and the phone ringing and you see somebody's name come up and you say, she don't call me. I know she only, she must got something to gossip about. And, and a little part of you says, oh, man, I need to, I know she probably got some. But then you got to fight that demon. That's a demon. That demon that's trying to get you to answer the phone so that you can involve yourself in, in that foolishness. You got to fight that de- Satan, get behind me and let that phone ring. Don't even read the voicemail because they might leave one. Girl, call me. Don't do it. It's the devil. 
It's the devil. He's coming. The devil is clever. He knows how to ring you in. God knows you'd be wanting to know what's going on. You'd be wanting to hear because you know that if she calling, it's probably about such and such and such and such always got something going on. Don't allow yourselves to fall for that trick. Hallelujah. Don't fall for it. It's all a trick. And that's why I'm here today. Because I declare right now in the name of Jesus that there's something great that's getting ready to transpire in God's people's life. But we can't let nothing stop us. How many know that as God starts to move, you're going to see how people start to talk. And they're going to kick you down. They, or you, some of the stuff that you, some of the things that I've heard pertaining to myself, I still can't believe it. Me? And sometimes it make you want to just go and run up on somebody and be like, you said that. But you got to even, and I'm talking about the pastor. And how many know I got to go in that war room, I got to get on my knees, and I got to fight the fight the way I'm supposed to fight it? See, through the scripture, we got to learn how to fight. God gives us the way how to sustain ourselves, how to keep ourselves in his glory. We have the road map. It's the scripture. Hallelujah. Never forget this. Proverbs 15 and 4 says this. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in spirit. That's for all you Christians. That's for all you believers that run around holier than thou. But the minute something come out somebody's mouth, that you don't like, you turn straight into that one. How many know that your spirit has been breached? There's holes in your salvation. There's a question of your effectiveness to serve and be faithful to God. And that ain't nothing to play with. People playing with their salvation. They think God is a game. The Bible goes on to say in Psalms 34 and 13, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Keep your mouth off of evil. Don't let nothing provoke you to do what they do to you. Because what separates you from the heathen, what separates you from the enemy is your ability to apply God's word to your life. It's been plenty of times I felt attacked and wanted to fight back, but I know that in God, he gets the glory in everything I don't say. Every response I won't give. When they can't move me, when they can't penetrate me, and how many know that when you won't respond to foolishness, they're going to go harder? They'll start talking about your mama. How many know we're sensitive about our mamas? Don't, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, young brother. Don't talk about my mama. Hey, guess what? They might be talking about your mama, but your mama, if she in Christ Jesus, she winning. Don't even let them make you mad. That's for my young brother here. Because, hey, how many know I'm like him? I don't play about my mama. I know, we, I know we got some people in here that don't play about their mamas. I'm talking about in school, how many of us got in a fight that would knock my mama off the toilet if you want to, and we going out back. Hallelujah. Don't play about my mama. And we definitely don't play about our grandmamas. Come on now. I got a witness in the house of God. We don't play about our grandmothers. But how many know you? <laughs> you... Can't let the devil win. You can't let him win. Don't you know the enemy know you don't play about your grandmama either? So what's the first thing you're going to do? Use somebody to talk about your grandmama. And as soon as you swell up, he say, oh, got him. Got one. 
<laughs> I got me one. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm here because I need to let God's people know we must be encouraged. We must be prepared. We must be ready. There are so many different ways that the enemy will come. And this is something that is so very common of how people will talk and talk. They'll talk about your family. They'll talk about your wife, your husband. They'll talk about your children. Now, wait a minute now. You talking about mothers don't play about their babies. They don't play about their babies. We didn't have sisters that'll come up in the church and snatch you out of it, talk about my babies. I know one. Talk about my daughter. Talk about my son. I'll come and snatch you up right up out of, ah, 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 the devil's a liar. Don't do it. That's the devil. That's what he want. Let him keep talking. Because you know you talking about my baby. And if it's true, don't let it bother you. Keep praying about it. And if it's false, don't let it bother you. Keep praying about it. Because how many know they'll talk about your baby in truth and that'll bother you too. Because who was you to talk about my baby? But then don't turn around and say, your baby worse than mine. Don't do it. The devil's a liar. He's a liar from the pits of hell. He's trying to steal your salvation. Don't let him have it. The Bible says be angry, but what? Sin not. Hallelujah. We're going to get angry. I get angry at some of the stuff I hear. You think I like people talking about my wife? I don't play about my wife. Not my wife. If this was back in the day, it'd be some smoke in the city, as they say. Say something about my wife. Say something about my wife, my baby, my joy, my heart, my blessing. Back in the day, I, used to, I had a saying, and I'm, I think about it now. I'm a pastor. I lay hands. But back then, I'd lay hands Literally. Literally. But now I'm a man of God, so the only hands I'm laying is in prayer. Hallelujah. But that don't mean that it don't bother me when I hear these false accusations about my queen. Or about my babies. Or about the ministry. Or anything of that nature. Yes, those things bother us. But we can't let the enemy win. By allowing these things to penetrate our spirits. Because now, as the scripture says, now it becomes a breach of the spirit. That's a breach. The enemy has infiltrated. Hallelujah. So let's finish this word up today. Let's go to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to finish this up. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the roadmap on how to deal with the ignorance of people. This letter was wrote by the Apostle Paul to the believers in Rome as he prepared them. He wanted them to know this is how. This is how you deal with it. Romans chapter 12. We're going to be starting from the 14th verse and I'm going to finish it up with these words of scripture. To those at home. If you got your Bible, open up your Bible app. Receive this right now in the name of Jesus. In Romans chapter 12, starting at the 14th verse, the scripture says this. Bless them which persecute you. Hallelujah. Bless them which persecute you. It says bless and curse not. You got to bless them when they talk about you. Don't go back and forth with nobody. Don't, don't allow people to hurt you to the point where now you find yourself back and forth, back and forth, arguing and going back and forth with somebody. The best thing you can do is to speak a kind word to somebody that spoke something ignorant to you. It'll throw them off. You ever, if, try it. If you ain't never done it before, ever had somebody come at you sideways and say something crazy out their mouth, and then all you do in return is say, God bless you. Let me give you a short story. I drove a truck. <clears throat> back my truck up in a spot. Tractor the trailer was already getting ready to back in that spot. I didn't see him where he was, so I backed in in front of him. Big man, B, 
big man, about 6'6", 300 pounds. I had just got saved, too. He jumped out the truck, runs up in my face. When I tell you, he was so close to my face, he could have bit my nose. That's how close he was. Hallelujah. He runs up on me, all types of filth. Mother F this, and you, uh, I was getting, that's my spot. I was getting ready, spitting in my face. I've been saved 10 minutes. Come on now. 10 minutes I've been saved. At that point, I'm already visualizing him sleep. Like I'm having visual, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing me punching this man head and him going to sleep. While he's spitting in my face. You this and you that. I gathered myself. I said a prayer. It was short. You know what it was? I'm going to tell you what the prayer was. It's got to be you, Jesus. That was the prayer. I gathered myself. Wiped my face from the spit that that man was spitting in my face. And I said, sir. I did not know this was your spot. I did not see you back and in. I will pull out so that you can get in. How do you ain't see me? I'm in a big tractor trailer. Like, Sir, have a blessed day. Turned around, got in my truck, pulled out, and called my wife. And I had to cut and I had to call my wife because, like I said, I've been saved 10 minutes. <coughs> So I actually started thinking, like, yeah, you know, and I, and I said, as I got in the truck, I said, boy, I know God must be working on me. For real. First of all, this old man don't even know. This was an old brother, too. He was probably about in his upper 60s. Big, burly beard. And so I thank God for the temperance that he was building in me. Now, here's the beauty of it. I seen that man about a year later in a place, and he walked up to me, and he put his arms around me, and he hugged me. And after we finished hugging, when I let him go and he let me go, there was tears running from his eyes. You know what he told me? He said, that day, what I did to you, he said, I was going through something so tragic in my life. He said, I was hurting. He said, and I want to thank you because I held on to them words when you told me to have a blessed day. He said, I held on to that. He said, knowing that you were a young man that could have probably knocked me out and hurt me. I could have been hurt. But he said, I don't know what your relationship is or who your God is. He said, because I'm not really a religious person. But he said, that day changed my mind and my heart about what faith is. and So whoever your faith, whatever your faith, and that's when I had the opportunity. That's when God will open up a door. That's why you show love when they curse you. That's why you never know when God may open up a door for you to minister to somebody. And look, I don't even know the word of God, but all I can say is, sir, I just gave my life. When I met you, I met, just gave my life to Jesus Christ maybe about two months prior to that happening, and I'm just walking my walk. I'm just trying to get right with God. Hallelujah. How many know he'll do it? How many know he'll do it? That's, that's the God we serve. The Bible says that a, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. That's why we don't go back and forth. We don't offend others when they offend us. We show love, the love of Christ, and they see it. And they may not accept that from you when you show that love, but down the line, they'll open up a door for you to be able to give another kind word or an encouraging word to somebody that needs Jesus. This is what the gospel is all about. It's beautiful in that way. The gospel is beautiful that way. There's nothing that Jesus tells us to do that's ever wrong. All we got to do is apply it even when it's the hardest to do it. To watch the results of it. To watch God move in his word. But you got to trust it. So the Bible says in verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. 
Be of same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condensed to men of low estate, but not wise in your own conceits. Recompass to no man evil for evil. We don't do that. We do not do evil for evil. When somebody say something negative to you, don't say nothing negative back. We don't go evil for evil. We don't go eye for eye. You know what that is? That's the world. That's the streets. When I lived in the world, if you did wrong to me, I was going to come see about you. That's the gangster life. That's not the life of Christ. Everywhere he went, everywhere his epistles went, they were chasing him out of towns, beating him, stoning him. But they ain't pick up stones and sticks and fight back. They allow God to fight their battles. Let's go a little further. It says, if it be possible as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. Hold on to that. No matter how much they try to bring you out of your character, remember that God tells us to be peaceful. <clears throat> to live peaceful with all men, especially the ignorant ones. Especially the disrespectful ones. Now, I know we got some Christians that be like, you know what, Pastor? I ain't about there yet. That's all right. Keep praying. We're going to get there. We're going to get there because I wasn't always there. I know God then protected my salvation many a times and a lot of y'all too. That's why, you know what, that's one of the reasons why the Bible teaches us that we got to come out from amongst them. You don't want to put yourself in situations where things can happen. Hallelujah. If you're wondering why the Bible says women adorn yourself in a modest apparel, let me give you an example. The reason why is because when you go out walking around in the streets, look at any old way, and then you got ignorant people approach you like that, then imagine what happens if your husband is in the next aisle at the store. Because guess what an ignorant man will say? He don't give a flying this about your husband or nothing and say it right in front of you. Now, as the pastor, I got to go to that brother and say, brother, trust me. You need to let me pray for you. <laughs> With that face. You see that face? Bro. You need to let me pray for you because this one is mine. You got to reach for him. Come on, let's lock up. Let's pray. And if he don't want to pray, then we got to trust God that he's going to walk off. Because anything further than that, never forget this. Peter carried the sword and he used it. Be careful. Be careful for mine, for my wife, for my family. Can we can we have some real talk? See, a lot of these a lot of these pastors, we gotta have these real conversations because what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna contradict the word of God. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not standing here contradicting the scripture. But what I'm saying is that I trust God enough to know that if I stand on his word, he'll shield and protect me. So if I'm standing on his word, that means that while that young brother or man is doing evil to me, I'm not going to do evil to him. And while he's showing the total disrespect to me and my family, I'm going to show love even in the midst of that. And I'm going to trust God's word for that. But we also got to understand that in the times that we live in, there's people that are demon possessed they are possessed by them spirits and I'm going to tell you like this I fight all spirits y'all like how I did that right all spirits don't play I don't play about mine but I'm a servant of Christ so I know he got me that's why to this day I haven't had a situation where I had to come out of character or lay hands on somebody. You know what? Because God tells me in the scripture that if I don't do evil for evil, if I don't 
if I bless those who curse me, that, and I trust God's word. That's why in the worst situation, I trust God to move. You got to trust them. You got to trust them. Verse 19 takes us home. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance is his. We don't have to come for you. God it's already got that taken care of. Let him talk. Vengeance belongs to God. Let him hate. Vengeance belongs to God. Let him curse you. Vengeance belongs to God. Many people coming out their mouth sideways, they think they're getting away with it. Little do they know. Because you got an anointing on your life that they can't have. And they mad. You got a calling on your life that they can't understand. And they mad. And you covered in the blood of Jesus. And they mad. A good smile will chase a demon right away. A good smile. Your ability to say, you know what? I don't have nothing negative to say about that brother. And I don't care what he said about me. Be careful. People will open up the doors. For the enemy to come in, you got to make sure you shut that door. I ain't talking about nobody, to nobody, about nothing. Because then the enemy has opened up the door for me to become a reviler, a backbiter, a gossiper. Hallelujah. And I will finish it with this. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. How many know? How many know that that same brother or sister that was talking about you, gossiping about you, backbiting about you, talking about your kids, talking about your family, it'll be the same one that'll call you and say, hey, sister, I'm going through some things. You got a couple dollars I could borrow. I need some gas. I, I need some food in the house. I need this and I need that. And you got to be able to do it with a willing heart and say, yep, I got you. Come get it. Mm. How many know? <laughs> you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to do that because that's what the scripture teaches us. That we got to love. That we got to feed. If they hungry, we got to feed them. We got to feed them. Now, the first thing you're going to say to yourself is, no, this fool didn't just call me for some money. No one ain't been talking about me. But after that, then you got to do what thus says the Lord. You got to do it. Come on now. This is the scripture. This ain't me. This ain't my theology. This the Bible. You got to. The Bible says what? Feed him. If he thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. On his head. That same person you helped when they know they've been talking about you like a dog. They got to go home and they got to deal and live in their conscience. On top of the fact that you just allowed someone to experience Christ Jesus in you. How powerful is that? What kind of blessing you think you're going to receive in that? That's what I'm in the blessing business. I want God. I want to receive from God. And I know it ain't going to be easy to always do the right thing. But I know that the blessing that you receive for that is so great. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. That's God's way. And if you represent the kingdom, it's the only way. Don't let nobody fool you. You can't walk this thing halfway. Either you in or you out. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There, there is no halfway walk in this thing. Either you in or you out. And the world has led us to believe that it is. That you can walk as you please. But either you in or you not. That's not to say that in this walk there won't be trial and hardships. But still, 
even in that, stay focused. Stay focused on Christ. Because when things happen, what's the first thing people do? They come running to God. When the trouble come, Lord, I need you. Lord, and then some of us wonder why things ain't moving in our lives. Maybe we need to reevaluate our walks. Where do you stand with God? Look yourself in the mirror. Take inventory of your own self. Hallelujah. So I thank God for this message. And to all of our brothers and sisters that are watching on our social media platforms, I would ask you, if this message touched you, if it helped you, share it. Share it so somebody else can receive. Because you never know when someone else may need to hear these words. The same words that you know just helped you. Share. And, and we give God all the glory in this place. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, and thank you, Jesus, for your way. And so I, I would say as we end this, God bless everyone that has watched and will watch this. God bless everyone that is in the house of God today, and I pray that heaven smile upon all his people. Amen. Amen.